This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on The South Today, cyclists take on the infamous Bluff Hill climb as we catch up with stage four of the tour of Southland. Health agencies and festival organisers work together to make the South Dunedin Street Festival free from sugary drinks. And a brilliant sunny day helps to attract a large crowd to the Amberley AMP show. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Melissa Barton. Tour of Southland cyclists face the infamous Bluff Hill climb as part of their 148 kilometre race today. Riders travelled from Invercargill to Bluff via a Fortro circuit on stage four of the tour. Sharon Rees has more. With another start from the velodrome, riders made their way through Invercargill before turning at Odoramica Road to begin their journey towards a distant Fort Rose. The Bluff Hill Climb, which was once a stage on its own, is now part of the 148 kilometre Stage 4, making for a long day in the saddle. Yeah, you used to time trial up it, so you start at the bottom and just race up it as quickly as you can, but now they ride out uh, over 140 k's, I think it is, out towards, uh, out, out east, and then they come back into the, what could potentially be a westerly, and it has been in previous years, it's quite a significant stage um, on the tour, it certainly makes or breaks many races uh, for the riders. Earlier in the day, cyclists were cheered on by Edendale Primary School pupils before travelling through Wyndham and turning towards Fort Rose from around Pine Bush. Tour leader Michael Torkler said after four days of riding, the Bluff Hill climb could be a daunting prospect, but he planned to have his team backing him to retain the yellow jersey. I'll have them wrapped around me all day, so um, yeah, we'll, be, we'll be riding together, that's certainly the plan. And hoping to uh, retain the jersey by the end of the day? Oh, definitely, definitely, you know, we're, uh, we're going to fight for it, so that's, that's obviously the plan. But in a gruelling battle up Bluff Hill, he trailed Canadian James Pickley, who took the lead on the steep climb. Pickley managed to cross the finish line seconds before Torkler, who still, however, holds the overall lead going into Stage 5 tomorrow. Sharon Rees, The South Today. Work has begun on a major new piece of electricity infrastructure in Wanaka. Heavy machinery is preparing the ground for a new substation, part of an electricity upgrade, as Wanaka continues to grow. The site at the corner of Ballantyne and Riverbank Roads is a former stone quarry owned by the Queenstown Lakes District Council. The work is part of a $720 million 10-year upgrade Aurora is working on throughout the southern region. The substation will be commissioned early next year. The 5th South Dunedin Street Festival is being held this weekend and for the first time it's going sugar free. While South has been working with the Southern District Health Board and festival organisers to make the festival free from sugar sweetened drinks. That sugar film released in 2014 explored the dangers of the white stuff now, organisers of the South Dunedin Street Festival are heeding the message. Organiser Nick Orbell says this year, as well as going alcohol-free, sugary drinks will be banned. We've been able to um, access some sponsorship to provide um, some bottled water at very low cost, and that enables the vendors to still be able to get a decent margin and encourages them to participate. He says the initiative is based around concern about children's teeth and the uptake of sugary drinks on a daily basis, as well as juices masquerading as healthy options. My understanding is even with um, things like fruit juices, the absence of fibre in them, you know, the, the same amount of sugar in eating an apple and drinking a glass of apple juice, the apple juice is much more likely to cause damage to your teeth. Sweet goodies will still be for sale. Orbell says the event is family friendly. It's pretty early in the day for a lot of the festival too, so, you know, there's plenty of time afterwards if people want to party. The festival this year has a different flavour without sugar, as more demand has come from groups that want to be a part of it. An extra stage has been brought in and there will be three performance areas. Roselle Lebone, The South Today. 
In stark contrast to last year's wet and cool Ambly AMP show, this year's show was held in brilliant sunshine and attracted a large, large crowd. Under the guidance of President Lucy Turnbull, the Amberley AMP committee turned on a family day of fun and competitions on Saturday, including a food court, wood chopping and an abundance of sideshows and craft stalls and historic machinery. An auction of prime lamb by PGG Wrightson's John McCone entered in the Harris Meats Hoof to Hot Plate was a popular attraction. There were good entries in all livestock classes. The pavilion was a smorgasbord of colour with art, flowers, baking and craft classes for all ages. The picturesque grounds provided the perfect setting for the day. The average property value in Dunedin is now $382,402. Figures released by Quotable, Quotable Value New Zealand this morning show that Dunedin is one of the few areas of the country where property values are still rising. Daryl Bazer has more. Dunedin residential property values are continuing the upward trend seen over the past 18 months, rising 12% in the year to October. QVNZ figures show Dunedin properties are now 33.6% higher than the previous peak of 2007 and have risen 2.3% in the past three months alone. In a release, QV Dunedin property consultant Aidan Young says the Dunedin market is slowing from its earlier pace, but the market remains very competitive, particularly for first home buyers. Young says there are lots of first home buyers looking at present, and he's seeing a number of buyers frustrated and even desperate after missing out on properties numerous times. He says the market is suited to those selling properties of all values, and believes some buyers aren't performing the due diligence needed, or are being more prepared to overlook any flaws or red flags about a property. Aidan Young says there are still gains to be made in the investment market in Dunedin, as well as Central Otago and Wanaka. He says these gains are no longer being found in other parts of New Zealand. Aidan Young says elevated properties with harbour views are selling particularly well and quickly. Daryl Beza, The South Today. Still to come on The South Today, the new government works to fast track its free fees tertiary education promise and a delegation from Shanghai specialising in traditional Chinese medicine arrive in Dunedin. For all your news from the southern regions as it happens, go to our Facebook page. The South Today, connecting you with your community thanks to New Zealand On Air. Gillian's Care. They care for loved ones, families, friends and our community. At a time of bereavement, care and support makes all the difference. And Gillian's know this. They're here for you when you need it most. From advanced funeral planning to a service for your loved one, Gillian's will guide and assist you with your individual choices. Their legendary attention to detail and passion to get it right are second to none. Gillian's. Caring for families in our community since 1962. Circopolis, a crossroads between imagination and reality, limits and possibilities. Don't miss Circopolis, described as Cirque du Soleil's hipper, sexier cousin at the Regent. Twelve performing artists combine the worlds of circus, dance and theatre. This is your only chance to see this extraordinary show by Montreal Cirque Eloise in Dunedin at the Regent, 23rd to 26th of November. Book now at the box office or ticket direct. Hi, Lindsay here from Alex Campbell Menswear. Just think, 80 years ago, this year, my grandfather set up Alex Campbell Menswear right on Cargill's Corner in South Dunedin. We've had some great years bringing Otago and Southland the very best of menswear for both business and everyday needs. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief.
The University of Otago, an institute of world-class education and the social epicenter of the city, with outfits needed for more formal functions like the ball and for less formal functions like... The zoo? Are you sure? Yeah, trust me. Yeah, Dad, you'll definitely see me. I'm the one in the yellow and blue face paint and the ones in the zoo. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings, 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8, and Sunday afternoons, 4.30. Garador Dunedin, delivering quality, stylish garage doors in Dunedin for over 15 years. New doors, replacement doors, repairs and maintenance are all part of Garador's quality service. Garador Dunedin offers a full range of modern quality doors to suit any home. Come visit the team at 553 Kaiko Valley Road. Visit www.garador.co.nz or call us on 488-5676. We're a 25 Moro place at Dog with Towers Cafe and Bar. So we take coffee very seriously. We do what's called contract roasting, so we're creating our own roasting profile and then doing our own blends. We're, we're really focused on the craft of what we're doing. You know, we're going back, instead of going on mass-produced, sort of cheap things, we're taking the time to really craft what we're making. Make it so anyone can come here and have a, have a feed um, and be able to get something they're able to eat or that they, that they want to eat as well. You're kind of getting a taste of cafes from all around the world when you come here. Love at First Sniff takes a humorous look at dog weddings and all things canine. Brought to you by Murray's Vets, Radical Dog Food and Goodwood Kennels. Love at First Sniff, 7pm Sunday. Welcome back. The new government has fast-tracked work on its fees fee, free fees tertiary education promise. Cabinet has given the go-ahead for the introduction of one year of fees, free fees study, a $50 a week boost to student allowances and loan entitlements. Officials have already started work on both changes which will come into effect from 1 January 2018. Education Minister Chris Hipkins says approving affordability is a key factor in accessing higher education. A delegation from Shanghai specialising in traditional Chinese medicine arrived in Dunedin today. One message delivered at a mural reception was that synthetic ingredients are being developed to replace ingredients from rare and endangered animals. A delegation from Shanghai was in Dunedin today exploring opportunities for collaboration in traditional Chinese medicine and healing. The group, including Wu Yang Feng from the Hong Kong district, met with Deputy Mayor Chris Staines. Chin Lo of Antidote Pharmacies in Dunedin says China is working on synthetic products to replace ingredients made from endangered animal species. Like India or Africa, so they were always sourced from other countries. So this is practice that's go back a few thousand years. The challenge for modern society is how are we going to be able to utilize the scientific studies of what we know in terms of if there is a beneficial properties, how do we actually replicate that? He says modern Chinese are becoming much more aware and concerned as consumers about the use of ingredients from such animals as rhinos and tigers. Even from dealing with tourists that are coming out of China at the moment, it's changing from the big tour groups to the more professional younger couples. Uh, the professionals, of course, they are a lot more aware of the global views of what sustainability is. Lowe says the most common ingredient in cold medication, pseudoephedrine, is derived from a Chinese herb. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. The iconic Transalpine Express celebrated 30 years of taking tourists between Christchurch and Greymouth yesterday. The South Today joined in with the festivities. Greymouth pulled out all the stops, throwing a party on the train station platform as the Transalpine arrived from Christchurch for its 30th year. One of the original planners of the tourist venture was John Bennett who was pleased to see his dream still in action. Well, I think the fact that it's coming to the west coast, my old home province, I think that for me makes it special. 
Uh, the scenery is spectacular and of course now we've got some, the, the, the rail's got some very nice um, rolling stock. It really makes it a pretty special trip. Tourists on yesterday's journey agreed they'd enjoyed the spectacular alpine scenery. We have enjoyed all the uh, snow peaks and uh, rivers, bridges and everything. One of the original drivers in attendance was John Prince, who recalled driving the Transalpine as being a highlight of the job. It was one of the best jobs I enjoyed doing on our roster. And uh, we, I continued on that until I retired in 1992. Greymouth's Mayor Tony Coxhorn said that the town had benefited a lot from the Transalpine. We rely on tourism more than ever today. And we get so many coming across saying what a fantastic journey that has been. The Transalpine looks set to ferry happy travellers across the Alps for many years to come. Rudy Adrian, The South Today. A crowd turned out to the octagon today in hopes of scoring a free burger. A long line was seen outside Velvet Burger this morning and for some students it was a welcome break from study. This golden ticket allowed the first 50 hungry patrons in the queue a free Velvet Burger, although the wait was too much for some. Part-time burger model and full-time Velvet Burger worker Alyssa Mitchell says some people were turned away after just missing out. A lot of more people showed up and I had to turn them away unfortunately. Um, it's like probably like 10 people turned up earlier and asked if they could still get a free burger and the way all the cards have been given out. But it was all worth it for those who made it through the Velvet Gates. There was something for all burger connoisseurs and with titles like the King Saddleback to the Cheesy Bro, pork, chicken and beef lovers were in heaven. Roselle LeBone, The South Today. After the break on The South Today, former All Black captain Richie McCaw confirms he will line up again for the God Zone Adventure Race next year. And the Highlanders named their new squad for the 2018 Super Rugby season. Love at First Sniff takes a humorous look at dog weddings and all things canine. Brought to you by Murray's Vets, Radical Dog Food and Goodwood Kennels. Love at First Sniff, 7pm Sunday. Active Furnishers Limited, home of quality service with superior product and an in-house design team who are always happy to advise and create an imaginative solution for you. Active Furnishers Limited, part of Dunedin's design history. Don't suffer in silence. Call Sunny Chin, Chi Master Body Technician for Structural Muscular Emotional Body Work. Phone 03 4250 606 for all your pain relief. From rare to the recent, visit the legendary Hard to Find for your quality secondhand books with the largest stock in New Zealand and a friendly book loving atmosphere. For good prices, buying or selling, come visit 20 Dowling Street. say goodbye to your pet, Heaven Sent Pet Cremations are here to help you through this difficult experience. Call Heaven Sent Pet Cremations today for their care and guidance. Phone 489-2274. Hi, Lindsay here from Ellis Campbell Menswear. Just think, 80 years ago, this year, my grandfather set up Ellis Campbell Menswear right on Cargill's Corner in South Dunedin. We've had some great years bringing Otago and Southland the very best of menswear for both business and everyday needs. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. 
For three generations, the Kilpatrick family have ensured Jimmy's Pies are still world famous in the South Island. Made to an old family recipe, Jimmy's Pies have been one of New Zealand's traditional takeaway foods, prepared daily on the premises alongside a range of savouries, sausage rolls and cakes, Jimmy's Pies are distributed throughout the Lower South Island. Jimmy's Pies are sure to satisfy your travelling munchies. Sir Coppolis, a crossroads between imagination and reality, limits and possibilities. Described as Cirque du Soleil's hipper, sexier cousin, don't miss this extraordinary show. At the region, 23rd to 26th November, book now. Bring some more joy into your world by adopting one of our adult animals at SPCA Otago. Call now on 4738252. Please adopt a pet now, they will love you forever. Motor Trade Finance proudly brings you Rural Delivery. A look at the places and faces behind New Zealand agriculture. Tuesday evenings 8.30, repeating Saturday morning at 8 and Sunday afternoons 4.30. Thanks for staying with us. Former All Black Captain Richie McCaw confirmed today he will line up again for the God Zone Adventure Race in March next year. Playing touch rugby in Queenstown on Saturday, Richie McCaw wasn't sure if he was going to take part in his second God Zone Adventure Race. Yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, I'm just tossing it up. But today he confirmed he will race for up to 10 days in Fiordland along with team mates from last year. Rugby Players Association Chief Executive Rob Nicol and Wanaka Adventure Racer Sarah Fiermaid. The fourth member of the team is Wanaka Multisporter Champion Kayaka Bob McLaughlin. McCaw says the race will be a good way for him to start the new year and he is attracted by the challenges presented by racing in the harsh Fiordland environment. It is the first time the event has been held over 10 days rather than 7, and the multidisciplinary course will include mountain biking, kayaking, packed rafting, trekking and a rope section. A hundred teams from around the world will compete at God Zone Chapter 7 from the 1st of March till the 10th next year. In Amso, the South today. The Pulse Energy Highlanders have named their 38-man squad for the 2018 Investor Super Rugby season, including 30 players returning from the 2017 team. The squad includes eight current or former All Blacks and seven Māori All Blacks. Inside Highlanders headquarters, adjacent to Forsyth Bar Stadium, new Highlanders head coach Aaron Major announced the squad for the 2018 season. In a live stream to social media, Major says the loyalty of Southern players is ensuring a strong team environment. Delighted to have 30 Highlanders returning. Uh, those players have all committed to continuing to grow our game. Uh, it's pretty, a pretty special place to be to have uh, such commitment from, from those players. However, there are also new additions to the lineup, including Thomas Umanga Jensen, Shannon Frizzell, Pari Pari Parkinson, and Tyrrell Lomax, alongside Kalolo Toloma. Outside back, Tevita Nabura, and Canterbury outside back, Josh Mackay. While Major says Ben Smith is still on sabbatical, he says the All Black firmly remains a team player. Ben's obviously um, on a sabbatical at the moment, but he's still really connected to the team. He's still on the phone, wants to know where we're going, and he's very excited about the 2018 season. So uh, but we're, we're lucky. Uh, he's a pretty special character. Um, he loves this team, and he's committed to helping this team grow going forward. So. Uh, it's been a great help to the coaches uh, through our planning phase. Um, so we're trying to get him away for a holiday, but um, he's still very closely connected to, to what we're doing. Otago first five, Josh Owane, makes the step up to Super Rugby in 2018. And Major says he's looking forward to welcoming players like Owane and says it was good to watch these athletes during the Provincial Mitre 10 Cup competition. Daryl Beza, The South Today. And now a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome Barry Stewart. Barry, what have you got for Hello, us in Melissa. tomorrow's well, paper? Well, a rather sad story really. Tributes to Aaron Bailey, a uh, key figure in, in softball in Otago. 
who died in a car crash in, in central Dunedin this week. So uh, tributes flowing in for Aaron. Uh, regional mayors have, have slammed uh, public health authorities uh, over their Ronald McDonald House stance. So more on that story. That would be an interesting one. Well, it's, it's been a hotly debated over over the last little while, so there's more on that, obviously. So, uh, yeah, and, and of course, uh, continuing the health theme, uh, a week into his role, David Clark, a health, the new health minister, is looking to shake up the health sector. So we have a look at uh, what he's been up to over the past week. Uh, and uh, good news for the University of Otago. Researchers uh, from the University of Otago have claimed a record $24 million in the Marsden Fund grant. So that's, uh, I believe, a record uh, figure, although I, I believe the, the fund has actually increased uh, this this time round. But good it's effort fantastic there. fantastic news for the yeah, university. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's uh, great. They certainly pride themselves on their research, and, and that's a tribute to that. Uh, and uh, finally, we have uh, a big sports section tomorrow, uh, and uh, one of the key things will be the All Black team to play the Barbarians, although the Barbarians is a mixture of New Zealand team uh, players anyway, so let's see what happens. But anyway, we have the, New the All Black team name for that game. Fantastic. Something definitely to look forward to in tomorrow's newspaper. Yeah, Lovely. Thank, thank you, you, Barry, for that. And now look at what's happening in tomorrow's weather. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Silberhorn College and Plus. Looking at the situation, the warm northerly airflow of the last few days is on the way out, with a few days of cooler showery west to southwesterly airflow expected over the weekend. To the southern outlook, Balclutha, Catlins, Gore and Lumsden, you will have fresh westerly showers and 15 degrees. To the central outlook, Alexandra, gusty westerlies and some cloud, 20 degrees. And Queenstown and Wanaka, much the same with gusty westerlies, some cloud and 18. And Tiana, it's the same for you, but a slightly cooler, 15 degrees. To the northern outlook, Omaru, moderate northwesterlies, high cloud and 21 degrees. Amarama and Twizel, you both get gusty westerlies, some cloud and 18. Timaru, moderate northwesterlies, high cloud and a high of 23 degrees. Here in Dunedin tonight, cloudy with a few spits of rain with an overnight low of 12 degrees. Tomorrow cloudy but some sunny periods at time, mild with mild, moderate northerly winds dying out, then a period of light southerly winds during the afternoon, 20 and 9. And cloud increasing and lowering on Saturday with some light showers during the afternoon. Light winds at first but moderate to fresh northeasterlies developing then tending northwesterly at night, 16 and 9 degrees. And in Umbacargo tonight, cloudy with rain with an overnight low of 9 degrees. Tomorrow, rain easing to showers with fresh to strong cooler west to southwesterly winds developing, 15 and 9. And cloudy with showers on Saturday, fresh to strong gusty cool southwesterly winds, 13 and 7 degrees. And that's our news for this Thursday. For the latest news from the South Today team, you can follow us on Facebook and at channel39.co.nz. I hope you all have a great evening. Take care. Ka kite anō. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.